Hi, everyone. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about the evidence on placenta encapsulation. Hi, this is Rebecca Decker, and I'm your host. I'm a nurse with my PhD and the founder of Evidence Based Birth. In today's podcast, we're going to talk about the evidence on placenta encapsulation. Today's question comes from Michelle, a midwife. Michelle asked me, is there evidence to support the use of encapsulating your placenta to prevent postpartum depression or to increase milk supply? Well, that's a great question and it's one I get all the time. What's the evidence for placenta encapsulation? Well, the placenta is your body's temporary organ that delivers nutrients and oxygen to the baby during the pregnancy. And the placenta also removes waste for the baby. Up until recently, the only evidence we had on taking your placenta, in other words, dehydrating it and putting it into little capsules, which you swallow, this is called placenta encapsulation. Well, the only research on this came from very, very old studies. There was one very old experimental trial from 1918, a hundred years ago, and another one from the 1950s. And these were very poor quality studies that did not give us any valid information. Many, many websites report that placenta encapsulation improves your milk supply, improves your mood, decreases your chances of postpartum depression or baby blues, and even increases your iron supply. However, many of these people write about these benefits without giving any backing info or evidence-based info to support their claims. One theory is that the placenta, if you ingest the capsules, that it has high levels of iron and maybe that prevents postpartum depression because sometimes iron deficiency anemia can be linked to postpartum depression in some people. Well, in 2016, two studies came out in which researchers analyzed the contents of placentas that had been encapsulated. In the first study, they chemically analyzed 28 placentas that came from donors who were non-smokers. In this first study, they looked to see what kind of minerals were in the capsules. They found that the placenta capsules contained a modest amount of iron, about one-fourth of the recommended daily intake of iron for breastfeeding women. That equals to about three ounces of chicken liver or three ounces of canned sardines. It also contained trace or modest amounts of other minerals. There were no toxic levels of any elements that they looked at that could be harmful, There didn't seem to be any toxic ingredients in the placenta capsules at all, which is good news. Other than iron, none of the other micronutrients reached high enough levels in order to make any kind of an impact on your body. In a separate publication that used the same data set, researchers analyzed the placenta capsules for hormones. They looked for 17 hormones and they found that there were 15 hormones that were present in all 28 of the placentas. They found hormones like progesterone, estradiol, which is a form of estrogen, cortisol, aldosterone, and testosterone. Overall, the concentrations of the hormones were relatively low, but the researchers said that the concentrations of progesterone and estradiol could reach levels that could lead to physiological effects. However, this study wasn't looking to see if the hormones had any effects. They were just looking to see if the hormones were detectable, and they were for the most part. In 2017, the Journal of Midwifery and Women's Health published a new study, a randomized trial, all about the effects of placenta encapsulation. Now, the important thing to know about this study is it's very small. It was a pilot study, and it's part of a bigger randomized trial that's currently going on at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. Researchers there are doing a large, randomized, placebo-controlled trial to discover if placenta encapsulation has any effect on postpartum depression or not. This particular study that was published in February of 2017 was a small sub-study of that larger study. In this smaller study, they were looking at iron levels and iron deficiency anemia and whether or not placenta encapsulation helped prevent anemia. So let's look at what they discovered. In this study, they enrolled healthy women and they were randomly assigned, like flipping a coin, to either taking their own placenta encapsulated or taking a beef placebo that was encapsulated. The two pills were identical looking and it was impossible to tell the difference between the two different treatments. Some people have criticized the study because beef was used as the placebo. However, it was important for them to have a placebo that replicated the look 
and smell of the placenta encapsulation. This was also a blinded study, meaning that the people taking the pills didn't know which kind of pills they were getting, and neither did the researchers who were administering the pills to the women. They measured their iron and hemoglobin levels at 36 weeks of pregnancy, and then again about four days after the baby was born, about one week after the baby was born, and around three or four weeks after the baby was born. Women in the study were instructed to take two capsules three times a day for the first four days of the study, and then two capsules two times a day for days five through 12, and then two capsules one time a day until the end of the study. The study ended between around three or four weeks postpartum. What they found is that most of the women had a decline or decrease in their hemoglobin levels, meaning they were trending down towards anemia immediately after the birth, around day four. But then the hemoglobin levels went up at one week and at three to four weeks in both groups. The anemia got better and iron levels improved in both groups, whether they were taking the placebo with beef or the encapsulated placenta. Now, the study was limited because it was so small. There were actually only 23 women total in the study. Also, the researchers did analyze the contents of the placenta encapsulated pills, and they found that there was a higher level of iron in those pills compared to the placebo that contained beef. However, it did not have any effect on the women's iron or their hemoglobin levels. Finally, almost all of the women in the study were eating diets that were already sufficient in iron. Maybe they would have found different results if these people had iron deficient diets where they weren't eating enough iron in their regular diet. There's a bigger study that's yet to be published and I can't wait to see what the results are for the larger randomized trial where they look at the effects of placenta encapsulation on postpartum depression. As you can imagine, it's really important for us to have evidence on this topic because placenta encapsulation is growing more and more popular. As this trend increases, we need real solid information about the pros and cons of placenta encapsulation. Right now, we don't know if it has any effect on postpartum depression and whether or not any effect it might have might be due to the placebo effect. I look forward to updating you when more research comes out on this topic. Thanks for listening. Bye. 